viewers, welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. Got an old four Hondu Elephant. It's got the big two four, and it's got a customer complaint of a coolant loss. I checked it out, and I don't see anything external. Neither did he. You know, you don't see it leaking out of the water pump or the radiator, or the hoses, or you know, anywhere that's gonna say, "Hey, that's where your coolant leak is." So uh, my belly's telling me it's probably internal. It probably has a blown head gasket. He doesn't have any type of head gasket symptoms except for the one time that it was really low on coolant and that's when he discovered that the car's consuming or using coolant. You pull the oil dipstick, it's nice and clean, just looks like dirty oil. And again, you don't see anything on the outside of the block. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna use the Pico Scope and a pressure transducer. We're gonna stick it right on the radiator cap. We're gonna shut off the injectors and we're gonna crank the engine over because one thing I did notice is the other day uh, when he left it here and I drove it in and I was gonna check it out is as soon as I pulled it in the shop here and it was cold, I popped the radio cap and it, psh, you know, I had some pressure on it more than I thought that it should. So this is what we're gonna start with and we're gonna have a look and see what we find. Radio cap hides right down here. Here's that little guy, we'll get the radiator cap out of our coolant testing kit here. I think it's this one. All right, well maybe it's a skinnier one. There we go, I think it's this fella here. So we'll stick this down on the radiator. There we go, now we can stick our rubber hose on here and hook it to our pressure transducer. Uh, I'll put this away, we'll get our scope set up and we'll see what we capture. We will be using our WPS and I believe it's going to be range three, I think. And then I've just got the regular rubber hose on it. Now I like using this as opposed to a, uh, like a first look sensor because if I push radiator fluid or push coolant into this, it's not a big deal. Uh, you can use either one, but I've liked the results I've gotten with these over time. I can interpret it a little bit better. So I plugged the WPS 500 into the scope, which I've got this kind of thing on here off the side of my car right there. We're going to go right to channel A, open this up, and we'll go to probes. We'll find it here, the WPS 500, right there. And then we will be in range three, so I'll change that on the tool here. So I have that set up on range three. Now we're going to put a fair amount of time on our screen, and I'll leave that running. Got the key on, we're logging in here with a uh, scan tool. We should be able to go right in to the ECM here and turn off all injectors. It's kind of one of a cool feature on a Hondu that's useful in situations like this or when you're doing compression testing that you can just, you know, kill the injectors and we'll, this will give us an opportunity to crank it over. It's a lot easier to see, you know, variations in uh, cooling system pressure when you're cranking as opposed to running because the compression's higher, you know, cranking as opposed to running, and there's just less noise, as it seems. So we'll go into active tests. We'll go all injector stop. Uh, we'll need to do a reset after this. Yeah, that's right. Do we just manage to stop all injectors? We hit yes. Press OK to stop all injectors. They are all stopped. So now, bring this back up on our screen. I'm going to go crank it. We're going to keep an eye on that and see what happens. Okay, did anything happen? Oh, I'll be dipped, it did happen. So let's pause that. So look at this, this is exciting. Just that little bit of cranking, we went from zero to almost one PSI, 0.83 PSI. So almost a full, full PSI. Now we should be able to zoom in on this because technically we shouldn't have any pressure building here while we're cranking this engine stone cold. But we can see, you know, if we kind of step back here, let's look at big picture, we see these little steps. Okay. Let's kind of look at it like this here. And we see it kind of stepping up. Obviously some kind of turbulence here. Um, so there's, there's a couple ways that you can can go about this as far as saying, hey, you know, is this, you know, where, where's this coming from? The 
it, you know, theoretically, the only place it can be coming from is, you know, a blown head gasket. You know, compression is getting into the cooling system, and that's pretty much the only place it can come from. So, yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer. I think we should take it uh, perhaps a step further. And I say that because I'm going to get the job on this thing. You know, if the guy told me if it's a head gasket, he's going to fix it. What I like to know, personally, is what cylinders, you know, causing this. You know, is it what cylinder cylinders is causing this problem? And so you can handle that a couple ways. If you have, uh, you know, if you're using the first look sensor, you'll see, uh, you could set it up with a trigger and it's a little easier to see than it is with this. Um, or we could set up a, a trigger with uh, a spark plug or one of the coil packs and we can see when it's triggering versus you know when you know when we're getting the rise in pressure as we crank it or on in our case where an engine like this is super duper simple just take a spark plug out and crank it and see if it you know changes your waveform uh, theoretically when you get the spark plug or spark plugs if it's blowing between cylinders and into a coolant jacket or multiple cylinders once you take out the appropriate spark plugs and crank it over your problem will resolve itself it'll go away and then that's useful for when you're taking apart the engine so when i take this engine apart i can say oh cylinder you know one and two or cylinder you know three is you know the culprit and then when i'm doing a you know an inspection be like oh yep look at that you know that's where the gas gets blown out or you know we're checking the head for straightness that's where the heads work and, and something like that so it's usually useful to know where the head gas gets blown prior to taking it apart but uh, it's also very useful to see how quick this test was in a matter of a couple minutes. We made a determination, yes, this car is blown head gasket 100%. I think some people will disagree with, uh, you know, taking this any further, you know, blown head gasket to blown head gasket. And, it's, you know, and to some degree, I, I do agree with that. But boy, I tell you what, it sure is a shame of, you know, some things I've learned, <laughs> unfortunately, the hard way or, or over time. but. It's a shame to take it apart and you don't see anything. It sure is nice to know where the problem was you know, prior to taking it apart. And once the vehicle is torn apart, there's nothing you can do. You, there's no going back. You can't gather any more data. And let's be honest, to pull plugs on this thing, well, it's about that simple. I mean, we're almost there. We're gonna pop a few coil packs out. And in this instance, if I get the job, which he already told me I would, you know, none of this stuff has to go back in, so we're not really wasting it any time. We've already gathered some data. We know it's a blown head gasket. I just want to know which cylinder it is on. And then we'll go from there. Got our scope running again. Got our spark plug socket. All the spark plugs are still in it. I'm going to take and remove the number one cylinder, number one spark plug rather. Here's our number one spark plug. It is out. Let me just reach in there and crank it over. Let's see what uh, things look like. All right, doesn't look much different than it did prior. So we know it's not the number one cylinder. I'll let the air back out of the system here as I take out the number two spark plug. Here's our number two spark plug. Doesn't look really any different than number one. We'll let that start. I'm gonna reach in here and crank it over. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Doesn't really look any different. Looks like it's building pressure faster. And that could be because it's easier to crank on one and two and our problem is on one of our two remaining cylinders, obviously. So I'm gonna take out the number three spark plug right now. Here is our number three spark plug. That doesn't really look any different. We still have a little bit of remaining residual pressure on there, but let me uh, go ahead and crank this again. Oh, that's interesting. I cranked it about the same time 
as before we build about half the pressure. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, let's just carry on with this. Let's pull out number four just for proof of concept. I'll take number four out, but I have a little bit of a suspicion right now. Okay, now technically all the spark plugs are out of this engine. Oh, sorry. And that, that's the number four. It doesn't really tell us anything. Let's... Well, I, I guess I don't even really need to drain the pressure off it. Let's just crank it. Shouldn't change at all. Right? Yep, correct. So no change in pressure. But we lost about half our pressure by pulling number three and we lost all of our pressure by pulling number four. I'm gonna stick the number three spark plug back in the hole. Okay, the number three spark plug is in the hole. Let me, let me drain the pressure off this thing. I think we have two, I think it's blowing between cylinder, blowing in two cylinders. Okay, here we go. This is the number three only. Okay, that's seven. Yeah, look at that. So that's number three only. Okay, now let's do number four only, which we've already done. So that's number three, now I'm just putting it into the number four hole. Okay, it's in the number four hole. We'll leave the pressure right on it. Did we, did we have any change? Yeah, we did. So, bingo. There we go. That is 100% proof that we have a blown head gasket on cylinder three and cylinder four take this out because I need to take them out anyways. I'm gonna set that to the side while I turn all the injectors back on and it is a good thing that we use this one because I did get some coolant in it. It's inevitable. Unless you drain some coolant out of it. And it's curious to me that he doesn't have any other drivability complaints. He doesn't have an overheating complaint or you would think this thing would be pushing coolant out of the overflow like crazy but even looking underneath the hood here, there's no evidence of, of coolant being spilled all over except for what I just spilled here on the, the neck. So this is kind of, kind of one of those bizarre cases because typically when they're this bad, customers have other, other complaints or other symptoms rather. There we go, folks. A pretty uh, cool test and a pretty great way to tell definitively number three and the number four cylinder are both bad. They're both putting compression into that radiator. Now when I tear the head off this thing, I'll be able to know what I'm looking for, you know? And there'd be no more guessing, you know? As you can tell by looking at all four spark plugs, you know, we can look at these, and you know, you can't really tell, you know, one from two, from three, from four, you know, who's who's different here? Are they telling a story? You can't really tell. Could we pressurize the cooling system and, and look down the cylinders with a bore scope? Possibly. You know, I don't know that for a fact. That doesn't always work. Sometimes it does though, but he doesn't have any cold start misfires or any complaints like that. So, you know, perhaps the way this one's leaking, we need that, you know, 90 PSI of, of cranking pressure to, you know, push past the leak. You know, perhaps the, the 14 PSI or 15 PSI that the, the cooling system builds, you know, doesn't put it back into the tank or back into the cylinder. I don't know. All I know is this worked, it worked perfect. And we were fortunate enough to be able to just get to our spark plugs on this one to take them out to see when the pressure buildup went away. And that's, that's a really easy, you know, foolproof, no really having to try to interpret any kind of waveform way to do things. Because with two cylinders being blown out, if I had a trigger on there, would I have been able to tell it was two cylinders? Maybe. Probably not, if I'm being honest with myself. I'm not real great on the scope or with stuff like that, especially compared to you guys that do this every day. You know, with these tools, using the first look sensors, it's not, it's not my jam. <laughs> but I know I could have found it was two cylinders if I had had two triggers on there or a trigger on all four cylinders so I could see, 
you know, the full event. Perhaps I could do it that way a little bit easier, but I did it this way and it worked. So, work your way into that comment section. The questions, the comments, the Insta, the Facebook. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.